The semi-final for 2024, as many have been calling it, is now well and truly concluded. The battle for five states is over. Now, of course, the big day is to judge the wisdom of the crowd with millions of vote cast for their local state assemblies. Which way lies the pulse of Madhya Pradesh, of Rajasthan, of Telangana, of Chhattisgarh and of Mizoram? Now, the Election Commission has done a good turn this time around. They've set the exit poll timing back to 5.30, which means in just under half an hour from now, we right here on NewsX will be bringing you all the possible numbers out there. All the exit polls, all the polo polls, what the expert predictions are, what people are saying online, what the national pulse predictions are. All of this will be coming your way very, very shortly. So let's set this up uh, with equal amount of energy because uh, where do things stand? in as of 2018 remember there was a government change in madhya pradesh that happened what did the exit polls predict last time around in 2018 and uh, how close did they get my colleague devika is standing by devika absolutely rishab ultimately boils down to the number so let's begin with chhattisgarh this time around in 2018 this is what chhattisgarh looked like total seats are 90 halfway marks and are 46 Congress got 68 comfortable victory there, BJP 15, JCCJ at 5 and BSP at 2 and others at a 0. But what did the exit polls in Chhattisgarh predict? Uh, CNX uh, did not predict a clear victory. They in fact just about gave it to BJP at 46, Congress at 35, others at 9. C voter gave it to the Congress with 45, 39 for BJP and 5 for others. Access My India gave a clear victory to Congress at 60, 26 for BJP and 4 for others. And today's Chanakya again gave it to Congress at 50, BJP at 36 and 4 for others. Remember the halfway mark stands at 46, but this is the final result. So Congress was at 68, BJP at 15 and others at 7. Talking about Madhya Pradesh now in 2018, uh, as far as those results are concerned, total seats 230, halfway mark at 116. Congress, in fact, in 2018 got 114 seats, BJP 109. Uh, then you have the SP at 1, BSP at 2 and others at 4. However, what did the exit polls then predict for Madhya Pradesh? CNX gave it to the BJP at 126, C voter gave it to, uh, again, the Congress at 118, Access My India also gave the majority of the seat share to Congress at 113 and today's Chanakya gave Congress 125. Congress's actual numbers were 114, BJP at 109 and uh, others at 7. But if we were to look at the current numbers in Madhya Pradesh, which is of course also uh, very important, we will of course uh, put that out after this split with Sindhya, what do, where do the numbers currently stand? This is what Madhya Pradesh currently looks like. Congress at 98, BJP at 128, SP still at 0 and BSP at 1 and others at 3. So this is what currently the state of Madhya Pradesh looks like. Up next, of course, we have the numbers also then for another crucial state, Rajasthan. 2018, what happened in Rajasthan? Told seats at 200, halfway mark at 100, 101 in fact. Congress gets 100 seats, BJP 73, BSP 6. RLD 1, CPIM 2, RLP 3, BTP at 2 and others at 13. So Congress there getting a comfortable majority in Rajasthan just about. But what did the exit polls predict for the state of Rajasthan? CNX there gave it to Congress with 105 seats and BJP at 85, others at 9. C voter gave it to Congress, 137, 60 for BJP, others at 3. Access My India also gave it to Congress. Uh, they gave a rather very large range of 119 to 141, BJP at 55 to 72 and others at 4 to 11. Today's Chanakya also gave it to Congress in 2018 at 123, BJP at 68 and others at 3. So all the exit polls as far as 2018 is concerned for Rajasthan, they gave it to the Congress. Uh, but the Congress ultimately, in fact, if we look at the numbers that they gave, the Congress did in fact get uh, that they just about made it in Rajasthan. But we also go across to another major state in the south, Telangana, total seats stand at 119, the halfway mark is at 60. TRS there won a comfortable majority in 2018 at 88 seats. Congress Plus was at 21, AIMIM got their share of seven seats in Hyderabad and BJP at one and others at two. What did the 2018 exit polls then predict for Telangana? We saw that all the exit polls in fact 
gave it to TRS, but uh, it was only Access My India that sort of where the actual numbers, that range was actually uh, where Access My India got it right. Because CNX gave 7 to BJP, 37 to Congress, 66 to TRS and 09 to others. C Voter gave 5 seats to BJP, 53 to Congress, 54 to TRS and 7 to others. Access My India again gave 7 to BJP, 21 to 33 for Congress. So they were pretty much right about the seats that Congress specifically got. Uh, TRS at 79 to uh, 91 range and others at 5. So this was of course uh, for the state of Telangana where the TRS, we can see that Access My India was pretty accurate as far as those numbers are concerned. Last but not least in this election cycle is Mizoram. Total seats are at 40, half a mark is 21. Congress got a 5, BJP got 1 seat, MNF got 26 and ZPM got 8 and others got 0. So MNF there with comfortably 5 seats over the half a mark. What did the exit polls then predict as far as Mizoram is concerned? The exit polls, CNX gave it to MNF, but they didn't expect them to cross the halfway mark there. So 18 seats for MNF, 16 for Congress, 0 for BJP and 6 for others. C voter, the range for MNF was 16 to 20, range for Congress was 14 to 18, 0 for BJP and 0 to 3 for others. Access My India once again gave 16 to 22 to MNF, 0 to 12 for Congress, 0 for BJP and a 0 to 12 for, sorry, 1 to 12, pardon me, for others. Uh, so clearly nobody really seems uh, that they sort of got it right essentially for MNF because they ended up getting 26 seats. So that was well over the halfway mark, but all the exit polls were predicting that they'll sort of touch the halfway mark, but probably not. Over okay. to you, Rishabh. So let's, uh, that gives you a, a pulse of uh, the caveats that are often put in exit polls. I've been doing this for a long time. Okay, exit polls are, are a sampling because the wisdom of the crowd is actually the largest ever exercise, which is the election itself. Okay, so what, what's the themology? The themology there is that when it came to Rajasthan, the Congress was roughly at par with what the exit polls were saying, probably underperformed in the exit polls. When it came to Madhya Pradesh, the Congress slightly overperformed uh, when it came to the mean of the exit polls. Uh, in the Mizoram, Congress deeply underperformed and Chhattisgarh was roughly uh, where, uh, where it was uh, where, it, where it was at where you say the BJP probably underperformed on the exit polls. When it came to Telangana, it was a no brainer for exit polls. Everybody gave it to the BRS but the B, uh, BRS was the TRS then. Uh, the TRS at that point of time overperformed on the exit polls and Telangana battle is very interesting because uh, the battle is probably for the number two spot between the BJP and the Congress. Remember the BJP opened its tally in Telangana last time around. They are hoping that not only that they will far exceed, perhaps become, become the second largest party, more importantly have the second largest vote share. So that's a very interesting battle which has just concluded as we speak uh, in Telangana. So now let me open up this conversation. Joining us on the telecast, uh, we have Vineet Goenka with us. Uh, uh, Manaswi Thapar is with us and Dr. Pooja Thapati representing the Congress uh, party. Vineet Goenka, let me, let me start with you, sir. Okay. So now what, what, is, the, what is the gut feeling? Gut feelings we are, willing, we are willing to share is Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Telangana, Mizoram. One would assume that in Telangana, the goal of the BJP is to come as the second largest party. Uh, one can also assume that Madhya Pradesh is really close right now. Rajasthan is probably advantage BJP and Chhattisgarh is probably advantage Congress. What is your gut telling you? Rishabh Ram Ram to you and everybody who's on the show and watching this particular debate right now. I think Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh are very, very good as far as Martinta party goes. Telangana is going to be good because whatever is done in Telangana or Mizoram would be advantages with the past performance in 2018. So overall, Kamal Sabjaka Kilega. Okay, we need going to go it soft, short, short and sweet. Of course, we'll find out in, in two, three days' time. Let me take uh, uh, Pooja Ji's view on this also. Pooja Ji, now every political party, as you know, all, as our viewers know, uh, you guys do your own assessments on how it's gone. And I know there's a, there's a position you need to take on TV, but the elections are now over. There are no more votes to cast per se. How's it gone? Vishab, you're right. Elections have been uh, casted. Elections are over, the votes have been casted, and we have our own internal assessment. I'll come back to you on 3rd of uh, December. Same show. I hope you host the same show. Happily. And you'll congratulate me for uh, forming uh, states 
for forming governments and for minimum four out of five states that that's going to polls come breaking down to each one of them there is there there, there no one stands against uh, bhupesh baghel's uh, model of governance in chatisgarh chatisgarh is a is a completely gone from the state uh, from the hands of bjp madhya pradesh sees massive corruption massive unemployment there is massive anti incumbency wave against shivraj ji government we have seen there have been factions of uh, um uh, factions in bjp local bjp and eventually they came down to uh, fighting elections on the name of symbol and not mr modi ji coming to telangana telangana we saw we saw our top leadership uh, you know from uh, kharge ji from rahul ji from priyanka ji everyone taking out the multiple rallies you know giving it up all and on under the able leadership of mr revan reddy i'm very sure that we'll sweep the telangana polls coming to rajasthan ashok gehlot ji has given given a model of governance that's that's being emulated across the country we tried to help beat mehngai rahat camp beat chiranjeevi yojana beat the beat uh, institutionalizing the gig workers everything there and i have been to rajasthan i have worked in chatisgarh from the last 3 uh, 4 months i was in chatisgarh since august and i see no anti incumbency there ashok gehlot ji's government governance the congress government will sweep the polls and they'll form they'll form the government very comfortably okay. coming to mizoram mizoram also will perform very well so um, i hope okay. you congratulate all right me. okay so obviously no surprises ladies and gentlemen vinith goenka is predicting uh, 4-1 in favor of BJP. Pooja ji has predicted at least 4-1 in favor of Congress. Manasvi, uh, what what what's your gut telling you? Manasvi ji, if you can hear us. Yeah, I can hear. Yeah. What's your gut telling you? How's 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 it gone? How's this poll cycle gone? I I feel it's going to be very interesting this time. I I, I feel uh, the kind of momentum we have seen in the election is is very good. uh somehow somehow congress have some in terms of both the political parties somehow congress have not have that in fightings which is generally very public that has not happened for congress so this is going to be good for the congress the turnaround can be very uh, promising for the congress and having said that uh bjp which is generally a, a very very big juggernaut in elections a, a very big powerhouse someone who's always prepared for elections somehow this time did not uh, have that kind of momentum which we generally expect from bjp's post 2014 in general so that momentum that that uh, uh, warmth of bjp karyakartas in terms of connecting with the voters was somehow that x factor in bjp was somehow missing i don't know why uh everything was put on the shoulders of the prime ministers local lo uh, prime ministers shoulder local leadership which was supposed to be uh taking uh, it up in election is somehow not there i think that infighting of congress have gone to bjp maybe that could be the reason but i don't think there going, there going to be a large margin uh, difference between bjp and congress in thin uh, in thin margins we could see congress performing well okay. that is what Could be understood. Okay, so it is uh, it is a closer election this time around. I think that's a that's a reasonable gut instinct. We don't know uh, at the national level for the past ten years, Narendra Modi's BJP has always surprised on the upside at the national level. In the first few years of Narendra Modi at the center, the BJP was winning everything all around. So the huge momentum carried carried on. The question now is, Vinith Goenka, with a few months to go to the national elections, uh, do you think that the BJP at this point of time is deeply concerned about these states because it can potentially build a winning momentum, or is the focus on 2024? Vinith ji, yeah, go ahead. We can hear you. I think yeah. Uh, Rishabh ji, this runs parallel. Central elections are different thing, and the state elections are totally different. The mechanism and the machinery works in a different way altogether. But as far as Bharatiya Janata Party goes, the mood is upbeat. I'll give you some examples. Like Dr. Pooja gave examples. In Rajasthan, the death of Kanaiya Lal or the uh, women issue, which has been there, the rapes, the number of rapes which have gone up in Rajasthan, or the challenges faced by the uh, tribals there, has not been discussed. The unemployment ratio there, the law and order issues. Now this all goes in the favor of Bhartinda Party both for the state current elections, the results which will come in on the third, and as far as the general election. As far as Chhattisgarh goes, the scams like that Mahabir uh, Mahadev uh, app uh, scam or the other scams which are all known to us. So I think there 
भारतीय जनता पार्टी इट्स कार्यकर्ता एंड दी वोटर्स बोथ आर वेरी मच श्योर होम दे विल वोट बोथ इन दी असेंबली एज वेल एज दी जनरल इलेक्शन मध्य प्रदेश गोष आई हैव सीन सिपरा माई सेल्फ आई हैविंग टू महा श्योर दी रिलीजियस सर्किट ऑफ उज्जैन एंड ऑल्सो दी एजुकेशनल सर्किट इन भोपाल हैज गॉन वेरी हाई एम्प्लॉयमेंट इन द एजुकेशन देयर स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम आउटसाइड मध्य प्रदेश आर गोइंग टू मध्य प्रदेश फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर रीजन सो मध्य प्रदेश ऑल्सो इट्स अ कंफर्टेबल बिन एंड ऑल्सो with the ministers contesting the central minister central uh, mp is contesting the election the boost in the morale of the local karyakarta is up now as far as uh, other states goes maybe telangana and mizoram i will not be able to speak much because my travel there is very less okay but if you ask me the bharatiya party it is it's a character based party it works in uh, uh, structured way the messages are very streamlined and the karyakarta works see this is a party a party which has worked with two member of parliament 25 years 30 years back if you see from there it has jumped to uh, stable government zero scam government clean government transparent government government which is delivered so i think the okay no we need going there's no there's no doubt that for the past 10 years bjp has been the party to beat in a large swath of india but that doesn't answer my question mukesh tyagi uh, of the bjp joining us on the broadcast and mukesh ji my my question was you know we don't know how it's going to go and it's it's open of course you'll say you'll win everything but is this election cycle i know the bjp takes even a you know a, a mayoral election a municipal election very very seriously but in this case have, have these five states been more important or has planning for 2024 been more important this is suffering from serious hallucination and euphoria and uh, an entire uh, prediction is based on their very ill founded optimism and bjp knows its stand they we work at the grassroots level we reach out to each and every voter our organization doesn't come around when the elections are announced we work at every level booth level our organization is strength and that's the reason most of the time the surprising results come As far as I mean, कहते हैं बिल्ली के भाग से चीखा फूट गया उनको हिमाचल प्रदेश और कर्नाटक में भी अगर आप वोट एनालिसिस करेंगे तो आर वोट परसेंटेज हैज नॉट ड्विंडल एंड सो दे आर समहाउ थिंकिंग दैट दे बीबल टू मेक इट दिस टाइम बट आई थिंक बीजेपी विल कम आउट विद वेरी सरप्राइजिंग रिजल्ट कॉन्ट्रेरी टू ऑल दी स्पेकुलेशन एंड सिफोलॉजिस्ट प्रोटेक्शन हेयर एंड देयर ऑफकोर्स देर इज अ डिवाइडेड सिफोलॉजिस्ट फ्रॉम सम चैनल्स आर सेंग कॉन्ग्रेस सम चैनल्स आर सेंग bjp but we are very sure like prime minister modi said he said take the written undertaking we are going to win the elections so i think we have we will show it maybe okay. uh, margins may not be that huge but uh, as far as the victory is concerned we will have formed the majority in most of okay. the states there's no doubt that the bjp for the past 10 years has uh, has on the national level at the lok sabha always outperformed even the grandest of predictions modi has done better at the national level than anybody predicted uh, but the question is is it different at the state level bukesh ji is it different now is the wave the momentum that had that the that the bjp had in the first few years of narendra modi has it become disaggregated that at the central level maybe the people will still vote for narendra modi but at the state level they are now considering other options depending on local priorities uh, rishab uh, you see the performance of congress told of the states have been very disparate you see how the rapes have happened in rajasthan you see how the paper leaks have happened a huge corruption has happened and whereas uh, in madhya pradesh uh, i mean rajasthan because also there is another factor that alternatively either congress or bjp form the government and there is a huge anti incumbency because there is a fight and feud between um uh, uh, such uh, such an pilot and uh, ashok gehlot ji so so people are aware that there's no point of giving vote uh, vote to them so rajasthan we are very very clear madhya pradesh i think shivraj singh chauhan has turned around the election though there were headwinds against us i have visited most of the states where the elections are announced met the people okay. and i can see that under trends are more supportive to bjp okay. including look at telangana just a minute telangana we have got a huge record we had 23% vote share in municipal corporation we won many seats I think Congress was in a tertiary position. As far as uh, I think so, uh, in Chhattisgarh, Mahadev has, uh, uh, Mr. Goenka mentioned Chhatti. Uh, this Mahadev okay. has exposed the corruption, Gobar, uh, you know, the coal levies. So you know they have a history. People want not clean government. People are sure that Modi and Twin Engine 
has brought this economy okay. to the all right. uh, okay. first largest okay. and It's, it's fair of you to have a strong so, position and uh, like I said, we'll all find out uh, very, very shortly. But let me ask then a, a practical question to Pooja Ji. Pooja Ji, now something clicked in Karnataka, something clicked in Himachal. So what did what were the lessons you drew from those two state victories in the in recent times, which you applied to Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and others? Did it, was it the fact that the local leadership uh, played a more important role in poll strategy? Avani J, what the uh, strategy that clicked was keeping people at the center of politics. Strategy that clicked was promising people that we can deliver. Strategy that clicked is giving uh, giving relief to people from backbreaking inflation, from unemployment, from not just giving benefits to the top two percent corporates and thinking about the last man standing. I think that strategy clicked with Karnataka. I see women traveling free in buses and they're happily touring across Karnataka to hop in ta temples and uh, uh, getting out of their uh, houses. I see Himachal Pradesh where women are getting monetary benefits and that's empowering. When a woman gets monetary benefits, it empowers the whole family. So I think when we keep people at the center of what that has happened in Chhattisgarh too. We have promised farmers, we have promised loan waivers to farmers, we have promised uh, education free KG to PG education to kids coming to the, uh, Madhya Pradesh. Again, we have promised uh, subsidized cylinder rates. And this is the force of, uh, you know, promises that BJP, who is giving us cylinders of 900 plus rupees in central, uh, when it uh, occupies the central government, is promising 500 and 450 cylinders in the state government. This is the promises, this is the power of promises, this is the power of people centric okay. politics. So, but, but okay, all right, okay, Pooja ji, okay, uh, uh, on a larger, on a larger sc uh, scheme of things, yeah. is this a state election which is divorced from national level politics? Because the performance of the Congress party, one would have thought in 2019 couldn't have gotten worse, but it got worse from 2014 at the national level. So are you hoping there's some momentum that is going to be built here or, or is it this happening in isolation and there's a whole new new fight for 2024? So as is put across by the media channels, they are saying semi-final of uh, Lok Sabha elections. I say this momentum definitely helps winning these states just uh, you know puts a seal on our model of government that we are delivering to people it definitely helps and 2019 is a completely different game altogether game when it comes to 2024 2024 we are fighting elections under a common uh, platform called india block which is against the divisive policies of uh, the central government which is against the uh, against the anti people governance of uh, bjp and that's where i think that will make a huge difference it's not just about winning these states and it's also about energizing the cadre. Okay. It's also about energizing the workers that, you know, we will deliver. We can win states and just five months later, we are entering the Lok Sabha elections and we will take the same pro-people model of governance that we have. We have delivered in Karnataka and Himachal. We are going to okay. deliver in yes. Telangana. Yes, but, 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 but is that going to be good enough? Do you need a national level face also? Is Rahul Gandhi that face? We don't know. Let me get Vineet going into this. Vineet, I, I, I know you want to make an interjection. Uh, so Winnie, the whole halabu around national face has backfired badly. We have a national face in uh, Bharatiya Janata Party and we are seeing the state of the country. Country is in. So I think it's okay. the people... Okay. It is debatable whether the country is doing okay or not okay. But you will of course think the country is not doing okay. Uh, but Vinit Goenka will disagree with you. Vinit, Vinit ji, but let me, let me at least attempt to answer a question because these days no matter what we ask, you guys give your own answers. Uh, so <laughs> let me try. Is the BJP still now too reliant on Narendra Modi winning everything on his own name. Now, you can't say much in, in the case of Madhya Pradesh because uh, the incumbent is hoping to get a fifth term as chief minister. So he's probably won enough, but can he hang on there? How much is the reliance on Narendra Modi every time going and winning you votes in his name? See, uh, Rishabh ji, if I tell you, a successful, thoughtful, proven leadership will always be center of the love of people and also the Karikartas. Narendra Modi ji is, I think, probably one of the uh, leaders which we have seen in the last century uh, who talks and delivers. So he's not only loved by Bharatinta Party Karikartas, but also by common men. I'll give you one simple example and Dr. Puja will agree. I can't understand the pain of the women, whether it is my mother, sister or daughter, if they have to go in open defecation. Nobody thought about this for seven decades. And now today, with the 10 crore 
plus toilets which have been built, this problem has been solved. Please go and talk to that uh, sister of ours who had to earlier go in public and now she has the toilet built by Narendra Modi. So probably that connects very much with them. A. B. Direct benefit transfer through Aadhaar linking assures the women that the money will come in her account. Earlier in Chhattisgarh or in other places of the country, when the women went to take her benefits, she was insulted, times molested and also went through various other challenges. Now, direct benefit transfer eliminates this particular thing. Now, there is no discretion. There is nobody who would look at her in a different way. So, she is more comfortable and in the empowered. Now, these two things goes in the favor of Arthinta Party also. People have been benefited of this. So, to say that whether Arthinta Party will always contest in the name of Narendra Modi, of course, they should do that and they are doing it. So successful. Now you can't contest an election in the name of Rahul Gandhi. He has been proved wrong. He has been proved by his own party in 2019. Let me just I'll take 30 seconds more, Rishabh Ji, with your permission. In 2019, at least he had some sensible person like Jyoti Raditya Sindhya to advise him. Whether Sibbal Ji was right or wrong, but Sibbal Ji was with them. Ghulam Ali Nazar, a seasoned politician, was with them. Now these people are not there. Who are the advisors of uh, Rahul Gandhi Ji? And I think Rahul Gandhi is a star performer of Bharatita uh, Party, whenever he opens mouth, BJP's chances of getting more votes and making more seats are proved. Okay. Let me then put the question to, uh, if I if I can, to Mukesh Tiyagi. Puja ji, I see you. I'll just come back to you in a second, ma'am. Mukesh ji, so let me rephrase the question. So, uh, what Vineet Goenka is saying is not just Narendra Modi's name, it's now Narendra Modi's work, his track record. But a lot of people say, sir, that if you, you know, if you, if you create development, the aspiration for development increases. That doesn't ne necessarily translate into votes. People vote on momentum. People vote on, on, on emotion. Is all the schemes and all the toilets and all the avas is and all the har uh, ghar jal? Does that then guarantee a performance at a state level? Absolutely. I think there are a lot of central schemes which are implemented in the state. If there is a double. Uh, support from the center and the state, like you take example of many states who did not allow Ayushman Bharat scheme, which is such a wonderful scheme, which is non-discriminatory in nature, uh, to be implemented in the states. So the states have been trying to politically block very, very good, robust central schemes. So, but if there is a BJP and there is a, a center uh, also, I think Prime Minister Modi is a divine blessings to this country. Never before such a formidable personality has come to lead this country. And okay. he is leading the country, not only in the country, but all over the world. So his leadership is so admired. Look at the contrast. I mean, when Mr. Rahul Gandhi comes, look at his leadership. They are just like a rudderless boat. Mr. Gandhi has become a national mockery, as a matter of fact. I've, I've interacted very, very neutrally to the people. And they find Mr. Rahul Gandhi, when will he become mature? So you think you want to hand over the reins into the hands of the person who is not sure about his own leadership? So this is a yeah, fabricated... But, but that's at the national level. No, because in the past it has suited, as you know well, sir, that the, the Narendra Modi was a Rahul uh, Gandhi Rishab suited. Rishab it. Yeah, finish your thought. No, no, it's a synergy. I'm talking about synergy. Uh, the synergy between the center and the state, people have understood. No, no, the so, no, so, no, so, 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 so no doubt about it. Narendra Modi versus Rahul Gandhi at the central level suits the BJP. But at the state level, if Rahul Gandhi starts taking a back seat, as you can well argue that he probably has, then the Siddharamayas and the DK Shivkumars and the Kamal Nats and the Bagels maybe get a chance. It becomes a bit different. We don't know. We'll find out in a short. I'll let Pooja Ji quickly respond and I want to get Manaswi in. Pooja Ji, quickly, 30 second response. I think, you know, fighting Narendra Modi, uh, in the name of Narendra Modi, when Mr. Vineet Goenka said they'll fight every election from municipal to state to Lok Sabha in the name of Narendra Modi, I'm sure he accepts that uh, people outrightly rejected Narendra Modi ji's face in Karnataka after 19 uh, okay. rallies okay. and six roadshows. So I think he should not be the one commenting on my leader. He should not be the one commenting on a person who travels the whole country in the name of Bharat Jodo Yatra. He should not be the one commenting on... Uh, Okay. Uh, a leader who is, okay. who is all right we have a come on we love commenting on everything and, and, and anything under the sun and that we've seen a poll cycle of everybody commenting everything under the sun sometimes pleasantly mostly unpleasantly okay ladies and gentlemen it's 5 30. now what we're going to do is we are going to put out every possible category of prediction onto our screens in front of you let us discuss we have done we an expert analysis predictions and manasvi has, has sent us his numbers we'll just put them on our screens along with the others 
we've done a snap poll which is what the all india perception of people online is about who they think is winning not just the voters and then we are putting out every exit poll and an average so that you get all the numbers in one place so let's get started we'll start first quickly with the expert political analysts and what they've come out and said let's put our put the start putting the figures up on our screens uh, as we speak uh, so the first person we have asked is raj lakshmi joshi uh, she predicts chatisgarh completely hung house uh, between 45 and 55 of the bjp same for the congress so a hung house prediction uh, from her for chatisgarh uh, shekhar vijayan is giving uh, the bjp an advantage a uh, government forming advantage uh, in chatisgarh uh, manasvi thapar has also predicted a slight disadvantage uh, to the bjp in the in the sense of madhya pradesh giving the congress a 10 20 seat adv advantage uh, pkd nambiar is predicting a pretty close fight with a slight advantage to the congress in madhya pradesh uh, joyita basu the editor of the sunday guardian she is calling it much closer in madhya pradesh with a very teeny weeny advantage uh, to the congress by a couple of seats um, raja lakshmi joshi from madhya pradesh says bjp uh, <coughs> comfortably the largest party in past the half a mark beyond 120 seats with the congress coming at just over 100 uh, shekhar vijayan when it comes to madhya pradesh is giving the bjp a thumping victory 160 he says with the congress reduced to 60 that's his assessment manasvi thapar uh, in comes to rajasthan is giving the advantage to the bjp government forming advantage to the bjp uh, with probably a 10 20 seat advantage uh, against the congress so pkd nambiar in rajasthan is also giving the bjp but a bjp a thumping advantage uh, double the seats of the congress uh, joyita is also giving the bjp an, the edge uh, in rajasthan uh, rajalakshmi joshi is giving the bjp a thumping sweeping win Uh, in Rajasthan, that's their prediction. Shekhar is also giving the BJP a thumping win uh, in Rajasthan. In Telangana, uh, Manasvi is expecting uh, the BRS to form the government, but a strong showing from the Congress with the BJP uh, maybe getting one seat or 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 nil, roughly where they were last time around. Uh, PKD Nambiar expects the BJP to get between seven and ten seats. Uh, the Congress between forty and fifty, but the BRS still forming the government. Joyita is also expecting the BRS to sweep this with a reasonable performance from the Congress and the BJP roughly where it has. Uh, Raja Lakshmi is predicting the BJP does phenomenally well, gets 25 to 30 seats, and the fight to form the government between the Congress uh, and the BRS. Shekhar is giving the BJP 36 seats in Telangana, Congress the victory, and the BRS a total collapse in Telangana. so we have all sorts of uh, range of predictions over here let me go to manasvi and joyita since they are sitting with us uh, manasvi now that we had a chance to actually put some figures at it uh, let's let's start with rajasthan uh, first what's what's your what's your hot take on rajasthan why do you think it's it's close advantage bjp uh, see rajan rajasthan has a tendency rajasthan has a tendency it's five years this way five years that way and also at the ground what we have seen is though there is a in fight in bjp the in fight and confusion of congress was also very much there before the elections but after the election the congress did some kind of damage control and having all these scenarios combined together and congress though it looks like a perfect house of uh, of political party and leaders who are in sync with each other but uh, they are not we know in congress there is groupism is there and we know in bjp also groupism is there because i am giving that slight advantage to bjp is because of the nature of rajasthani voters which is 5 years for bjp 5 years for congress and this is the mentality of the voters there and this is going to happen because in the voter base they know there is a credible leadership at the center and the sync of the center and uh, of of the state could help rajasthan that is why that switch can happen and that switch is not going to be exponential okay. switch it is a marginal switch okay okay so advantage rajasthan Benefiting bjp, BJP. Joy joyita agrees or joyita advantage rajasthan bjp why uh, yes advantage bjp but also i don't think it's going to be a thumping victory uh, perhaps you know just crossing the majority mark uh, two things are at play here number one when it comes to uh, gehlot what we are witnessing is that there is a lot of appreciation especially among the rural poor and there are a lot of other areas women voters and all there is a lot of appreciation for gehlot schemes you know and the thing is that but at the same time there is a lot of anger in certain sections of voters in terms of what is known i mean what uh, voters are calling appeasement 
Okay, and so there this particular vote is kind of going to be fought and of course, this factor of you know that Rajasthan changes uh, government every 5 years, this factor is hanging heavily on voters minds. So, I think out of you know habit of changing the government every 5 years, okay. some might even if they want to vote for Gehlor, okay. they might go and vote for okay. BJP. Raja Lakhvi Joshi, Priya Sahagal, Sumit Peer, PKD Nambi are on the, on, on the broadcast with us. Uh, Priya. Uh, you haven't stuck your neck out and given us predictions, uh, but do you still think that Rajasthan is probably my minor advantage BJP, Madhya Pradesh might be different? Uh, yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Uh, somebody from my PCR will have, eventually uh, catch up with the muting and muting. You guys carry on. Sorry, Shiv. So, I have stuck my neck out. I have not given numbers because that is something I am not very uh, good at even otherwise. But I do feel that Rajasthan would go the uh, BJP way. Um, uh, Madhya Pradesh, I would say it is a close fight, but Congress will scrape through. And here I am quoting a very senior Congress leader also, by the way. Um, Chhattisgarh Congress, Telangana is probably going to be hung. And that is really where the surprise is. But the voting is still going on. So, I do not think you want to call it uh, right now. Okay. Um, Rajasthan, uh, Rishabh, you know, the, when I was there looking at the campaign, also the whole focus of it was that Raj Badle or Rivaz, because Rivaz, as Joyita just said, is to change the government every year. Yeah. But Ashok Gehlot has put up a tough fight. That's why I think Rajasthan will be close, but I think it will go with the BJP way. Trishal. Okay, PKD and MBR, uh, what's your gut telling you? We put out your figures. <coughs> to uh, come back in uh, 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 Rajasthan, both by the character of the state, except uh, in Kerala, we have not seen anywhere uh, these uh, routine has not uh, has changed in the la recent past. I think Rajasthan is definitely, the, the, the issue is not just talking about the, some of the schemes. There is so much of negative news both in the part from the party and also from the, uh, uh, between Sachin uh, Pilot and uh, what do you call, uh, yeah. So uh, Ashok Gehlot was happening and the moreover, the real schemes which they have launched have not really reached to the final uh, okay, we have got the next five days to analyze what is what, the prediction. So, Rajasthan, you are you are hoping or thinking that absolutely it is it's, it's actually 115 seats or uh, even can go to 120 seats. Okay, what for about the BJP? MP? What about Madhya Pradesh? Madhya Pradesh, of course, as uh, Priyaji said, it is a very, very tight fight. In fact, the last time also it was uh, even the BJP got a little. 0.5 percentage of vote extra, but then the scoring was uh, the B uh, Congress was good at. I uh, we are looking at the Gwalior region, how the Sindhya effect is going to happen in this election. Otherwise, BJP has got its strong cadre 20 years, and there is no anti incumbency per se. Yes, if there may be a, some amount of fatigue, if that changes, it okay. will be a very, very close fight. Okay, Sumit. Numbers, please. Take your neck out. Numbers. I'll give the numbers as always. Uh, BJP in Rajasthan, 120 plus. MP, 120 to 130. I can tell you that that's going to happen. Chhattisgarh looks a bit tough right now. Let's wait and watch. How does it go? Telangana is a three-way fight. Usually, three-way fights are advantage to BJP. BJP can, it can be a touch and go. Mizoram, I think it will be a bit tough for BJP to, it's literally tough. I'm not a bit tough, it's tough for BJP. That's how you how look at okay, it. Okay, so that's straightforward. Uh, you're expecting uh, that Chhattisgarh is probably too close to call, so maybe advantage Congress there. Rajasthan, uh, there's probably consensus that is close but advantage BJP. Uh, Madhya Pradesh, uh, the consensus is uh, seeming to be building that is very close. Some people are saying advantage BJP, some people are saying Congress, uh, which tells you that it is probably close. Uh, and then, of course, Telangana, a very interesting battle building up there. So, either, uh, either KCR sweeps it like he has or if he does not sweep it, then it is up, up, up for grabs for anybody. A fascinating conversation that is going on. Uh, let me get uh, a Shekhar with us. I can see, I can see him. Shekhar Vijayan, your, your best bet. So, uh, you know, I think uh, you, were, you were talking about all the states. I think Chhattisgarh, it should be a close thing between BJP and Congress. I think BJP should win around 37 seats. Telangana is a three-way fight between uh, the regional parties and the national parties. I think BJP should get around four seats there. Uh, Madhya Pradesh, I think around 106, 110 seats. Rajasthan, BJP should win. Okay, I but Shekhar, you are predicting you are predicting a possible defeat for KCR and Telangana. Why? Why is that possible? No, 
no, no, no, no. I, I don't think there's a um, okay. I think I got the numbers wrong there. I don't think there's a defeat for the SCR, but I think it's going to be a close contest. There's going to be an increase in the voter percentage. But but more than anything else, I think Congress is going to put up a big fight there for for KCR. Okay, so you're expecting the Congress uh, uh, to yeah. be to be to be holding fort over there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. They, okay. So you heard the expert assessments. The politicians are all grinning and smiling uh, with the parts they disagree with and wholly, wholly disagree with and absolutely disagree with. Uh, but let me just uh, put a different perspective on numbers, which is here we are here to take. Okay. Uh, so this is the snap poll that we've been running for the last three hours. Here are the results. Let me put them out on our screens. This is not the voters. This is the pulse of India on what they think is happening in the states. And here are the results. About two and a half thousand people have participated in the past three hours, uh, and the results from Madhya Pradesh. The people posting online uh, are suggesting that it's the BJP that is going to be forming the government in Madhya Pradesh by a whopping majority of 77 percent to 22 percent, and two and a half thousand votes that are being cast cast over there. Uh, in Chhattisgarh as well, 73 uh, percent of those of two and a half thousand votes that have been cast uh, in the past couple of hours, people are expecting a BJP government to be bought in Chhattisgarh. Uh, uh, in uh, when it comes to Rajasthan, is a thumping. Almost everybody who's voted in about just under 2,000 votes, 98 percent people think it is definitely the BJP uh, in Rajasthan. In a Telangana, it is advantage Congress. 65% of those who have voted think is the Congress forming the government, not the BRS. The BJP is at number two, and the BRS is in trouble, uh, as Shekhar Vijayan uh, has, uh, has been has been pointing out also uh, to to us. So the Congress advantage in Telangana, uh, very very interesting. And uh, Mizoram, well, agree it or uh, agree or disagree, people are giving the advantage uh, to the BJP, whether in form some former alliance or another. So let me take you through them again. Uh, the online poll, roughly between 2,000 and 2,500 votes cast in the past couple of hours. This is India's snap pulse online on X, and they are predicting BJP Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh uh, BJP, Rajasthan BJP, Telangana Congress, and uh, Mizoram in this case BJP, and is open to conversation. So now we have taken you through uh, all the details. in terms of the polls that are coming out we have done online what the experts say now let's get started ladies and gentlemen with the polo polls i want to kick this off with chatisgarh uh, where two agency polls are already out janki baat and access my india in chatisgarh uh, the bjp says janki baat gets 34 to 45 the congress between 42 to 40 53 so advantage congress not a thumping win but government forming advantage for congress access is giving 41 to the bjp 45 to the congress halfway mark is 46 so a slight advantage congress but predicting a hung house the average of the polo polls in chatisgarh so far is 41 bjp 47 congress and 2 uh, for others that's the first polo poll that has come out I, if my production crew will give me a chance to get it put on screen uh, my pcr crew i'll put it on our screens as well you're seeing the data already at the bottom Uh, of your screens let's put the polo polls data and stick to that now at the bottom of our screen joyata basu uh, we have the first exit poll results uh, chatisgarh advantage congress is that roughly roughly fit fit in with your gut instinct uh, yes uh, i think it is advantage congress but what is i would say quote and quote surprising is the close fight because when you are looking at uh, what happened in the last elections i think they got congress got around 68 seats and bjp got i think a few i mean less than i think fewer than 10 seats so if not what two or three seats something like that so compared to that from that for the bjp to make up and go up above 41 i mean above 40 that's a huge jump so obviously there is a lot of anti incumbency against baghel and even if he returns as chief minister or rather even if congress returns as uh, the ruling party over there so obviously there is anti incumbency but if the election turns out to be this close and ultimately things depend on you know independence and uh, voters from votes from here i mean uh, candidates from here and there will we see baghel return as chief minister or will it be ts singh dev you know then the fight will become interesting so the but the fights are on everywhere the fight will be on in rajasthan whether it will be gehlot or pilot potentially for the bjp whether it will be basundra or gajendra shekhar or somebody else for sure uh, in uh, madhya pradesh as well there will be a fight on whether you want to give uh, 
uh, the incumbent a fifth term as chief minister or, or uh, as CM or not. So we don't know. Uh, but what uh, the polar poll is predicting for you, let's get it put on our screens now. Uh, Ria, my colleague, is going to help me out very, very rapidly and get this done on your screens. There you have it. Uh, polar poll. So, with Peer, uh, the first uh, data coming from the agency is, is predicting slight advantage Congress when it comes to Chhattisgarh. What's your take? Rishabh, this is exactly what I told you. I feel that Congress has a bit of advantage, but if it comes to, you know, poll and alliance management, then if it comes to close call, then BJP will, you know, definitely do a better job than Congress, if it comes to that. Otherwise, if it's a kind of a decisive win for Congress, then there's not much scope to do. So, Congress should be worried if it comes in that range, where the poll engineering or the pre-poll alliances will come into the play, then definitely Congress is not going to make okay. it. That's what I think. It's an advantage to Congress, I told okay. you. Priya, Priya, first exit polls from uh, Chhattisgarh. Quick thoughts. No, I think this is uh, pretty much uh, what is happening, uh, what I would see happening. Also, Congress winning just about scraping through. Um, uh, but I think Congress will form the government and uh, Bhupesh Bhagel will stay as CM, you know, uh, because he is quite a favorite with the, uh, you know, both the Gandhis and Kharge. He's, uh, you know, he's mended his bridges. He's kept them all in good humor. I don't think they want to destabilize the vote and put in a th third person or T.S. Singh or anyone. It will be Bhagel and I think he will form the government with okay. a slim majority, but Bhagel. Okay. I agree with the. Okay. Uh, Shekhar, back to Chhattisgarh. Now you had the exit poll results, the first poll of polls. Two polls are out, they're predicting slight advantage. Congress. Okay, I can't see Shekhar. Manasvi, why don't you take that? I have already said in my, my prediction it is okay. going to be a comfortable win for Congress. That comfortable the numbers, yes, comfortable. But in terms of vote share, we'll see there is a uh, there is a marginal difference between BJP and Congress. Congress is going to win more seats with less margin. That is what my prediction is going to be, and I'll stand by it. I I feel it's a comfortable win for Congress, and BJP has also performed well. But no doubt it is Congress all the way because of the leadership and the connect of uh, Bhupesh Bhagel with the people of Chhattisgarh. It's intact. I don't think there is any uh, major changes which we are going to see either in change of chief ministers or uh, or in the name in Congress also. There's no, okay. there's no change going to happen. Okay. Raja Lakshmi Joshi. Uh, Rishabh, uh, good evening. Uh, you know, I think that uh, the BJP will do a little better than what is being predicted in uh, this poll here. And, uh, you know, I think that it is going to be an extremely cl close call between both the parties. So, uh, that is how I look at it, Rishabh. Okay. Uh, you know, so yeah. it's very close in Chhattisgarh. The polo polls. Uh, let's hop across to Madhya Pradesh now, where the two agency polls are out. Janki Baat and Matris. Uh, Janki Baat is giving a hung house. They say BJP one one three, Congress one one two, and five for others. So it's a hung house, in depending on who can get the others to form the government. Pretty similar to what happened last time around. Uh, Matris says. Uh, 118 to 130, they give in a broad range, but advantage BJP significantly. Government forming advantage uh, towards BJP. Congress between 97 and 107. The average age is, is 119 BJP, 107 Congress, and uh, 4 uh, for the others. Uh, PKD Nambi are coming on this. I, I can tell you this that uh, it is a close fight. Why I say this close fight? There may be a gap, either it could be either way. Were in uh, five seats or seven seats, maximum ten seats different. And if it is a close fight, you know that who forms the government. And that is a traditionally BJP is a very aggressive political party, and it has got uh, not only just the election management, it also knows how to manage, uh, uh, create a government, uh, whatever way it can be. So I think it's very very close. Except Chhattisgarh, I have traveled almost. Uh, except Chhattisgarh and Mizoram, I have traveled. There is no anti-incumbency in Madhya Pradesh. Everybody liked the Mamaji. Everybody wanted to have the Mamaji. The only thing is that Congress too, because it's a 20 years of fatigue and it was also a very tight contest in the last election and Congress won. And then who made the government after one and a half years? We all know that. So wherever there is a close fight, the government will be formed by BJP, wherever it may be. Even let me okay. uh, uh, even in Chhattisgarh, uh, Rishab, if there is a gap of five people, you will should not be surprised that T.S. Singh Devo will cross over to Congress with his gangs of people uh, in BJP. So okay. the BJP will right. eventually okay. will make Okay, a so Sea Water is predicting now a thumping win for the Congress, uh, 72 seats uh, when it comes uh, to Chhattisgarh. Uh, I have just given you the, the polo polls data that is coming out from Madhya Pradesh uh, as well. Priya, quick thoughts of you on Madhya Pradesh. 
you know i agree with uh, uh, pkd but i want to tell you pkd mama ji is popular everywhere but in the bjp bjp is not doesn't want to make him even if the people of madhya pradesh do so yes close fight i think kamal nath will manage this time uh, uh, around uh, because uh, you know the party will not want shivraj to become so kamal nath has the party support i think uh, kamal nath will form the madhya pradesh government and uh, ts singhdeo may cross over that's the only way he'll become cm if the congress has to make a cm in chatisgarh it will be baghel but uh, kamal nath and baghel so far Rishabh. Okay, interesting takes over there. Sumit, uh, on Madhya Pradesh, uh, two agency polls are out. One more agency poll is out for Chhattisgarh, which is predicting a Congress win. So the exit polls average is shifting in favor of the Congress in Chhattisgarh. In the in Madhya Pradesh, it is still near hung house, pretty similar to last time around. Rishabh, the only advantage what we have in Madhya Pradesh is last time there was a hung house. BJP had slightly more vote share. You didn't have Chambal. This time, um, entire Chambal is with you, 18 to 19 seats. So my prediction, I'll stick my neck out and say it will be around 120. At 120, there is no discussion who is going to make the government. So this is how Madhya Pradesh will look like. You will see it eventually falling up in place. And I agree with. I mean, as I told for Chhattisgarh, if it's a close call. Then we know who is going to make the government. I mean, telling that Chhattisgarh is going to be close. It's five, seven seats here and there. Is BJP who will make the government anyway? Madhya Pradesh is going BJP way because they see the Chambal factor is a big factor. Eighteen, nineteen seats will make all the difference. What is going to come here? And when they, these the fence edges see where the hawa ki saraf hai, you know the vote, voting patterns in the last moment change, and that is what makes all the difference. Seven, five seats here will impact on ten seats on the other side. So that is what is going to happen in MP. So okay. it's going to be. Okay, Jayata. Quick thoughts on MP. Now that you have two two exit polls, uh, you have Chhattisgarh. Uh, you've seen the on the bottom of our screens. That's the poll that's come out from uh, INSC voter. Uh, so Chhattisgarh, the exit polls uh, sort of wave is in the direction of the Congress. MP pretty close advantage BJP. Uh, well, MP. I mean, that is what I am hearing. That you know, MP is very close. Uh, but at the same time, if it is if it is close, it shows the kind of ground that the BJP has covered in the last few months. Because even I would say three four months back, we were hearing that you know Congress will be getting around one forty seats. Now from that, if this is the margin, and if even if the Congress is ahead of the BJP, maybe by about a handful of seats, two three four seats, it shows number one how the kind of ground that BJP has covered, the kind of fight that BJP has put up. and obviously if this is how it goes it shows the huge support that the bjp has got from those largely behnas from the women okay. so because you see that is something we saw even on voting day women came out in droves to vote okay a uh, political guest joining us uh, we have uh, 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 prashant choudhary joining us with brs prashant ji can you hear us prashant can you hear us One second, one second. Okay, we yeah. got you. We got you. Okay, Prashant. So now, uh, I mean, you are of course expecting a thumping win for the BRS once again. But a lot of people are suggesting no. The Congress has done reasonably well. Maybe the BJP will perform. Uh, some are even suggesting it's not looking good. You might even lose the government. How do you respond to all of this? Uh, it's it's all depends upon the uh, voting pattern that we observe right from 2018 to 2023. uh the poll uh, percentage of when compared to 2023 uh, 18 to 23 the poll percentage is very less so let us see if they, and and there is according to the exit poll uh, uh, recently that i have viewed now uh, there is in the 30 seats that uh, there there is a uh, uh, that there is a mere competition uh, that uh, between congress and brs otherwise congress uh, is going to lose and brs is comfortably uh, forming the government over there. okay so what's your best bet on who's number 2 if you're comfortable then who's number 2 oh yeah there is no doubt that congress is number 2 okay so do you expect the bjp to do better than last time of course uh, it's doing according to the exit polls let us see according to my thing uh, uh yes 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 because see it's always because bjp is last time is one seat one seat plus any any seat is uh, is doing better okay any any seat is is better so what does this set you up sir now you you the you are no longer the trs you are the brs you are now thinking beyond telangana as well uh, does a victory for a third possible term how does that set you up for 2024 yeah this is a uh, really really uh, a boosting uh, thing that happened after uh, uh, we forming into we we converting our party trs to brs changing the name of uh, and going into national level definitely this will be a big boost and uh, the developmental activities that we have done in telangana 
and uh, it will be a trial blazer uh, uh, and it will be a um, torch to uh, to vision india 2025 okay prashant 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 reddy if the congress become the second largest party and uh, and in this election as well and turns to be a threat how do you work with them in the national level politics then will you work with them uh and because see drs is a party which has uh, been formed due to due to uh, uh the incompetence of uh, bjp and uh, congress itself it's not about uh, Uh, it's, it's, it's the time will decide uh, because we want to emerge as a party that will uh, show a new light and new alternative to India uh, other than uh, Congress and BJP. Okay. So Prashant. definitely, uh, but time will decide. Uh, what okay. Other than Congress and BJP, Prashant Reddy, nonetheless, uh, wish you the best for results. Like we wish all politicians. I wish there were five hundred seats and everybody could form a majority. But for that's more not such how videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.